I'm here in Redding, California at the latest emergent 3D printed home. They've been spitting these out one every six print days. We're getting to watch them start one fresh here today that they should finish around Tuesday of next week. They've got three homes beside it, which they've already completed. So we'll take a look at that and get an interview with their crew members who we've met before. We'll figure out the learning curve and how they've adapted this system to traditional methods of construction. Using union labor is a tremendous advantage because once they iron out all the kinks, they'll be able to train up the next generation of labor force for construction automation. My name is uh, Bob Akzarian. I am Chief Technology Officer for Emergent 3D. We are on the job site uh, that we are printing four of our wildfire restoration house next to each other. This is the first uh, house in this uh, site that we did. I, this is actually the third house that we are printing in Northern California. Each of these houses that we are printing roughly takes about six days, six printing days to finish up. As you can see, this one is already the, all the rebars and reinforcement installed. The column cap are installed and ready for the beams to be uh, assembled and also the uh, wood trussing for the roof. So one of these uh, main experiments that we are doing, how to improve the print quality and without any manual work. So we decided to leave two of the walls inside the closet for the bedrooms untouched. So these walls are the same quality as we printed. Nobody troweled them, nobody touched them, nobody tried to clean them. And we start doing that from the first house and we, we can see all the progress that we have made in terms of the quality from the first one to the last one that we are currently printing. The on-site batch plan mixer behind me is one of the ways 3D printed construction is hoping to further automate the process and reduce the human labor in the mixing cycle. Babak, how has your experience been with this batch plan mixer? We had actually a very good experience uh, so far. We have been using locally sourced material, not only in Northern California. We did a project in so uh, Southern California, in LA. We used locally sourced material over there. Uh, we had a very good experience so far in terms of lowering down the cost of the material. Yeah, you mentioned the material yeah. cost, if locally sourced, is one third the cost of having to ship it in from overseas or have a pre-made system. Uh, and that's fantastic, being able to reduce your uh, material cost. What is the input required to achieve that reduced cost? You need to, uh, you need to have a very good understanding of the material science behind mm -hmm. the mix. You need to have very good experience in terms of 3D construction printing. It's not something that you can't do uh, based on a week or two of training. This lot has four printed homes on it. Each one is taking about six different print days. And it started with the third home emergence done now up to the sixth home they've completed. Of course, they've learned a ton along the way and now their team is looking extremely comfortable and confident with the process. We also get to see some of the things they've improved just on these few homes. One of the big issues they've had is the assembly and dismantling of the printer. Hopefully going forward, this can be a more efficient process as right now it's taking about two days. The first of these four homes already has girders on the roof and after the concrete cures for 28 days, it'll be structurally ready to receive the vertical load of the roof. The white you see is just a little extra curing agent. Uh, they sprayed a little too much. This is a code compliant building, which means an inspector will have to come through and check everything out just like they would have to with cinder block. So you have these pass throughs, especially for them to inspect the rebar that gets tied into the slab of the building. The printer stays in the same location throughout each home print, but they print it in different sections so that they can have easier hose management and a shorter hose, meaning less time the material has to run through the hose and quicker reactions when you make changes. The first part at the back was printed and then they moved to the middle section and then finally the front. Hi, I'm Sean and I'm the foreman on site here for uh, Mergent. Um, yeah, Sean Hogan, glad to be here. These critical moments require precision and finesse that the printer just doesn't have on its own yet. So with a little human contribution, the machine is able to pick right back up from where it left off. So I'm Don and Jamie, and I'm the CEO of Emergent 3D here in Redding, California. And we're at the site of one of our uh, 1,200 square foot wildfire restoration homes being printed right now. This is actually the sixth uh, home of this version that we're doing here in Reading. So the beauty of what we've been doing is that we've been printing the same house over and over. And so that's one variable we've been able to take out of, out of the, the thing. So 
our learning has been issues of weather. When we first started printing our first one, it was about 110 degrees and we printed through the winter and now it's getting hot again. I think today it's in the mid nineties again. And so we've done different things. We've broken the house into segments so that we have a shorter layer time when it's hot. We've definitely learned that. We've changed some design characteristics so that we can run longer flaps. We've made a lot of changes that affect our print quality and and I'm looking at what the guys are doing here today and it just looks beautiful. What's next for Emergent? Well, you know, we'll finish these up and then we're actually gonna take a little time. We're gonna move this equipment. We're gonna scale this, this printer down and actually move it into our shop and do some R&D work. We're gonna, we're gonna do some testing for materials and we're gonna do a little bit in-house while we're waiting for some of the other projects to come online. I'm back on the third print day of the fourth house on this emergent 3D printed house site. You can see the lighter colored concrete is the first day of printing, under the burlap is the second day of printing, and now they're on the second layer uh, of the first day of printing's section. Then they'll come back on a fourth day of printing for this side. Hopefully we'll come back for the fifth day of printing and see them almost at full height. It gets more difficult to print as you increase in layer height. So let's catch up with their team and see what they're paying attention to on this third print day where they're making incredible progress. Maybe one of the most productive Kobod printing teams. So the other day, last print, we printed this side of the building. Um, we had a short day. And we got uh, our predetermined height for a sample wall. And um, today we're back here. We're gonna print this as high as we can. We're probably gonna get around to close to six to seven feet. Uh, is this the higher layer quality than you got on the first three homes? This is a way better layer quality than our first three homes. We finally dialed in, got, you know, Bob Oxy, material scientists. Get the great material like this and it's easy to stack. Yeah, so we're here at the St. Mark's site. You could see that they've continued printing from what they started last week and I'm really quite encouraged when you look at where they started today and you you see the alignment you know alignment's just been an issue and it's something that that we're always wrestling with you know it's important that the next day or the next week or whenever you continue that it align with the previous one we don't you know when the house is said and done we don't want to know you know where you stopped one day and started the next so even though we're printing house number seven we are absolutely still learning and alignment is one of those things that we're we're still fine-tuning that process but this is super encouraging are there any other tools you got your eye on no not necessarily um we, we've got our hands full with this one right here you know if we can uh one one of the big things for us is you know our crew works four 10-hour days and we want to be extruding material as many of those 10 hours as possible. Right now we're getting five, maybe six hours of printing, actual extruding in a 10 hour day. I want to improve on that. We want to make this process more efficient before we start diving into other technologies. On this site, this is actually the fourth home on, on this one particular site. I think the first one down there we started around two months ago. And uh, now here we are on the fourth one. What I can say is, and if you were to go back and look, the layer quality got better with every print. Um, and you can't tell this necessarily, but really the efficiency has gone up. We're printing more you know, lineal footage of extrusion per day than we were before. We're doing it in fewer man hours. The future of construction automation is looking bright. They're making tremendous progress here, even more today than the last day we filmed and it's really inspiring to see how fast construction automation is taking off. With only one or two layers to go, it's amazing to see how much progress Emergence is able to make in one day. You can obviously see all the fresh wet layers on top is the print that they completed just in today over maybe six print hours or so. It's really spectacular how much they're learning and improving and I can't wait to see what the future of construction automation has in store. I'll come back in a day or two when they've moved back over to this section, bringing it to full height, and then finally getting to the full eight foot height on the first section. It's the calm before the storm and Emergent 3D is prepping their equipment to start the print for today. Yesterday, they got to full height on this left section and now they'll be working on the right section 
bringing it to height. We'll see how tall they get. Here we have the batch plant. We load our uh, gravel and sand. We like to keep it uh, gravel on this side, sand on, on that side of the uh, batch plant. And up here, we load our cement, which he's doing now. The cement goes from, from here into the auger, shoots down into the mixing chamber here, where it all gets mixed up. We have our water lines going in there as well on the side, and then it drops down into the pump. Here's the dry layer test, identifying that the printer is fully calibrated with the layer it needs to line up with. Now we get to see the startup process. They loaded the raw materials into the batch plant mixer, and now they've positioned the extruder head over this area where they'll expunge all of the material where they're starting the water and mix all through the hose. First, you just run water through, and then you start introducing some lubricants for the material to run through the hose more smoothly. And once you get the right consistency, which is usually measured by qualitative metrics by the operator, then you start the print and you have all of the initial material mixed in that bag. All right, I'm here with Evan, who's been working on this 3D printed construction site for how long, Evan? Uh, two weeks. And what do you think so far? Pretty sweet. When it's working good, it's awesome. What's this step you're working on now? I'm just putting some glue down between the layer, so between the last pour and this pour, so bond's good. All right, cool, thanks, man. Now the pressure is on for Sean, both literally the pressure in the hose and also the pressure of the importance of this step on the job site as the concrete reaches the appropriate hardness to support the next layer. If they go too quickly and the material is too wet, the concrete will just slip off the old printed layers. And if they wait too long, they risk clogging the hose. So this is the most critical component, getting the first layers of the day going. And then from there, they just have to keep it consistent. Every foot or so, they had horizontal reinforcement. So you can see Steve using the angle grinder to cut the horizontal reinforcement to size so that it fits perfectly connecting the inner and outer layer of concrete. Now that they've got the first wet layer down, they can attach the screed to get that nice smooth finish that Emergent has. The Emergent team is making great progress on the newest layers and they've got the prefabricated section under the burlap already. You can see the quality of the layers is really good and they've smoothed everything out just by kind of brushing against this edge. You get a little bit of uh, extra material and then they also are keeping everything well hydrated so you can get a good strong cure and that's just with water from the power washing system. After an extremely successful print day, all that's left to do is clean up. But just like Murphy's Law says, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. They had a little uh, problem with the pressure washer hose. Such a typical piece of construction used all the time, but it's such a simple little thing like this that can really cause a big issue for your project. It's very important to get everything cleaned out, so they'll need to run to Home Depot, get a new pressure washer hose in order, in time, before the concrete sets onto the system and it's stuck there. To close out the print day, they give a thorough power washing to the batch plant mixer and also the extruder head, which gets dismounted from the printer. You can see the extruder head is no longer on the axis of the printer that's being washed at the station that holds it. We'll go check that out. Steve back there is going around with the level and making sure that all of the door and window openings are straight 90 degree angles so that the install is a little bit easier. He's also making sure that they have the appropriate width from the bottom to top of the opening by lifting that longer piece through the whole section making sure it fits all the way up. With everything cleaned up they move the burlap from the yesterday's print to today's fresh print. They also continuously spray the print with water to make sure it has the maximum humidity to ensure the minimum cracking. 